Terry Crews, and I'm ready to start handing out the cash right here on Millionaire. For nine months, today's first contestant honed his trivia skills by hosting Trivia Night on a cruise ship. Let's hope he's as good on land as he is at sea. From Arlington, Texas, please welcome Pearson Brown! It's you, it's really you. It's really it's me. Really you. you didn't believe it would be me, huh? I didn't think, I thought they would have an impersonator or something. Oh, no, no, no. card or no, robot. Like, Hello, how are you? Good to see you. Oh, oh you do no, that no, good. No, it's your game. <laughs> Now, spending all that time on a cruise ship, at sea, working trivia, yeah, yeah. do you believe it's gonna make you great at this game? I believe it'll help, I do, I do. I think it's, uh, yeah, it's a good, it's a good practice. Uh, I didn't, you know, I didn't ever think I'd actually make it all the way here, yes. but uh, I'm excited. So you were the guy who did all the entertainment and trivia and ran, and ran games with all the guests on the Absolutely. ship? Absolutely, yeah, I, I even learned uh, to, you know, walk and, and dance on stilts. That was one of my many talents, I would oh say, God, yeah. So doing, doing the wobble on the stilts. Oh, and, uh, yeah, I looked at it. Uh, it's you, know, you gotta teach me some it's of that. Possible. All right, we'll talk about it Listen, later. Listen, after you get your million, promise me you're gonna teach me some of this. I will, I will. All right, we're gonna get that million Let's for do you, it. brother. Here is the millionaire money tree. 14 questions spread over two rounds with money values from $100 all the way up to $1 million. Yeah. All right, all right. Now, round one has 10 questions. From $100 to $25,000, we randomly shuffle the questions. Right. You shuffled up the money values, too. But if you should make it to round two, you will be just four questions away from the million. Now, let's talk lifelines. You have asked the audience. Right. You have jumped the question. And new for this season, you have the plus one, where you can bring someone you brought with you today down here to help you answer your question. Right. Who did you bring with you today? Today, I brought my dad. That's Bo over there. All right. And, uh, hey, what's up? It's good to see you. Good move, my friend. He looks yeah. intelligent. Oh, yeah, he is. <laughs> so are you ready to play? I'm ready, Terry. Let's do it. Audience, are you ready? Yeah. Let's play Millionaire! <laughs> oh, you get it through the suit. I love it. Here is your first question. Appropriately, Larry Speaks held what position at the White House during most of Ronald Reagan's presidency? Vice President, Surgeon General, Press Secretary, Executive Pastry Chef. I feel pretty confident on this one. I'm going to go with C, final answer. Pearson, you are correct, Woo! my friend. Yes. Uh, Let's divvy up some of that pastry for your bank. That's how you start playing this game. That's good. Feeling comfortable. All right, let's do it. Let's go. Next question, Keep it rolling. please. According to Time, many recent college grads can't find employment because they lack soft skills. Which of these is not a soft skill? Creativity, communication, computer programming, collaboration. Okay. All right. Uh, I already feel pretty good about this, this being, you know, it's the, the mind works, creativity and communication, collaboration, they're all sort of things that you just pick up, you know, from being, being around, uh, you know, uh, certain lessons that you learn through life. Like computer programming, obviously a hard skill. Yeah, let's go with C, computer programming. That is, uh, that is not, Which is not, not a soft skill. We'll go with C, final answer. Brother, you are correct. All right. All right. Let this computer give you some money. Let's program it up high. Come on. Come on. Two thousand dollars. Five thousand in the bank. Not bad. Not bad. Twenty-five. Fifteen. Ten. Let's go get it, Pierce. Some of those big ones up Let's here. Let's go get it. You ready? Well, let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. In order to keep a then popular type of facial hair from getting wet, Ellen Mitchison patented what specialized piece of silverware in 1873? Beard fork, mustache spoon, goatee knife, soul patch spork. Whew. I wish it was the soul patch spork, but I'm gonna go ahead and, and say that one is out of there. I'm gonna narrow it down there. I feel like 1873, there were quite a few stylus mustaches. That's kind of what my instinct jumps out at. 
and a mustache spoon would dip under the mustache. Um, it's just, it's jumping out of me. You know, I, I don't know, I haven't heard of the mustache spoon, but I'm gonna go with B, final answer. That's the one that was jumping out at you? It jumped out because it's correct, yes, my sir. friend. Yes, The millionaire. I'm here with the superstar Pearson Brown, who's got thirty thousand dollars in his bank. Uh, we're gonna just keep this going. Are you ready? Going along. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's play millionaire. Pearson, here's your next question. Because it contains the same toxic substance as poison ivy, merely touching which fruit skin can leave you with an itchy rash? Guava, mango, kiwi, papaya. Okay. Um, you know, I don't know this right off the bat. This could be obvious for somebody, not for me. Uh, this looks like a very healthy crowd. I think I'm going to ask the audience on this one. You'd like to ask to the audience, sure. definitely? I would like to ask the audience, yeah. All right, audience, Pearson needs your help. Grab those keypads and vote now. All right, the vote has been tallied. What does the audience say? 50% of the audience says A, guava. But 39% say kiwi. Hmm. Yeah, that is. Do you believe half of these people or 39% of these people? Yeah, that is a good question. Uh, do I? Do I trust these people? <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good question. Do they look trustworthy to you? They look trustworthy. That doesn't mean they are trustworthy. <laughs> Just kidding. I love you guys. Don't worry. You I'm use sorry. the lifeline. You can talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> They're out of it now. Oh, man, that is that is not enough for me uh, to go with them. I'm going to have to jump the question here. That's your final decision. That's fine. OK, Pearson has jumped the question. It's now out of play. You want to take a guess? I mean, I would go with guava, um, but let's, let's see. Was it guava? No, it was mango. Wow. Oh, how much money did Pearson jump over? $1,000. Right. $1,000. That's a great decision. 30000 in your bank, and you are now one step closer to the million dollars. Totally Good use cool of thing. a lifeline. Thank you. Here we go. Thank Next you. question. All right. What famous author was paid a national treasure stipend by his home country of Denmark until his death in 1875? Charles Baudelaire? William Butler Yeats, Hans Christian Andersen, Franz Kafka. Okay. Um, you know, my, my father is not from Denmark necessarily, but it is my remaining lifeline here to see if he's got uh, a knowledge of this. He is a big reader. Um, let's bring him down here. Let's, I'd like to use my plus one. Okay, you are going to use your plus one. I am. Let's bring your dad down here. Hello. How are you doing? All right. Okay. Come on up here. Come on up. There you go. There you are. Okay. Well, I'm not wanting that face. <laughs> you know, I, Pearson, yeah. I don't, right off the bat, I'll tell you that I do not know the answer with any sense of... Uh, Sure, that's right. The National tre <laughs> Treasury in quotes. Right. I'm thinking there's a clue there. I think so too. But but and, and so I mean, if it weren't for that clue, and I don't know his. Right, Baudelaire, Baudelaire sounds French, right? Uh, Baudelaire. Probably. Baudelaire. 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 I'll go with that. 
I, I would have said, okay, yeah, but I wouldn't put any faith in my guess. I would have guessed C. Hans Christian Andersen. I don't know if he wrote anything that would uh, reveal the national treasure clue. I mean, he oh. is beloved the world of course. wide. I love him. And, I and, love uh, him. We both do, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> but and so, and he's certainly the one with the most uh, name brand familiarity, I would suppose. But I don't. I can't say with certainty that he's from Denmark. Um, you know, it's it's the most of the, the Denmark sounding name. Yeah, it, it, it really is. I think it that's makes sense. It makes sense. Let's go. Let's do it together. All right. I'm not All blaming right. you. Come I on. promise. Okay. Okay. You're still my yeah. father. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's reassuring. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's go with C. Hans Christian Andersen. Final answer. You guys weren't sure. You went with your gut. You went with what you knew. And you were correct. You did it. You did it. Let's get some of that big money for you. Come on, baby. Five thousand dollars. Thank you so much. Great, great. You have used your lifelines extremely well. I'm sad to say they're gone now. That's okay. That's all right. You know what? Need to get That's there. That's how you do it. Next question. You ready? I'm ready. There's more money to get. Woo! What popular Thanksgiving dish was invented in 1955 as a promotional recipe for Campbell's soup? Cornbread stuffing, green bean casserole, whipped sweet potatoes, cranberry sauce. Uh, you know, cornbread stuffing, I don't believe is going to use any sort of Campbell's soup in it. You know, I've got a membership at the MoMA. I've seen the, the Warhol collection of all the Campbell's soup cans, and I, none of them were those. So that doesn't uh, do me much good right now. Um, you know, whipped sweet potatoes, Campbell's doesn't have a, a sweet potato soup or anything like that. And cranberry sauce comes in a can, but it as far as I know of it, it just comes out of the can and kind of does the little, the little cranberry dance, you know? You just watch it. <laughs> Have you eaten any of these dishes? Uh, you know, I'm kind of a picky eater. I've had, yeah, okay, I've had all of them, I think. Uh, the one that I, well, I haven't made any of them, <laughs> unfortunately. I need to be more domestic. That is what I've learned today. It wasn't that I needed to brush up on general knowledge, it was that I needed to cook more. Awesome. And I'm sure I've got all my chef friends at home who are screaming at the TV. You know, I keep staring at green bean casserole. It seems like a, something that I mean, casserole usually has a can of something, whether it's, you know, cream of something, cream of potato, cream of, of wheat. $35,000 yeah. in your bank. None of the others make sense, though, Terry. You know, it's got to be that green bean casserole. Okay, B, final answer. You went for it, man. I just did. You're right, no! brother. No! I'm standing here with cruise ship trivia king, Pearson <laughs> Brown. He's got $45,000 in his bank. Are you ready to keep this going? I'm ready, Terry. Let's keep going. Let's play Millionaire! Yeah. Here's your next question. Right. Film buffs enjoy pointing out that each letter in IBM is alphabetically one letter past the three that spell the name of the villain in what film? The Silence of the Lambs, Psycho, 2001, A Space Odyssey, A Clockwork Orange. All right. Immediately jumping out at me is 2001 Space Odyssey with Hal. And just gonna double check it here, A, B, C, G-H-I-K, we got the H, A-B, we got the A. 
J-I-J-K-L-N Hal from 2001 Space Odyssey, the talking computer. This one I know, Terry, yeah, this is C. Final answer. You are right, Benson! The computer in 2001 was Hal 9000. Let's give him some money! Something big here, let's do it. Okay, $52,000 in your bank. Yeah. Three right. questions to round two. Yeah. No more lifelines. No lifelines. Let's go get it. Let's do Spill it. Spill some money on that 52. board. That big $15,000 calling you. Here we go. If you make it through the first six minutes of the official video for the 1985 song, We Are the World, you'll hear who shall get down in the last solo. Ray Charles, Aretha Franklin, Prince, Whitney Houston. Oh man, Terry, I am not sure about this. And I'm out of lifelines. $52,000 in your bank. Yeah. If you decide to walk away, you walk away with $26,000. That is OK with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, you you just said it. I, I don't know for sure. I don't really even have that good of a guess. I really can't narrow it down that much. I am so happy to walk away with twenty six thousand dollars, and that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna Is walk away. Is that your final decision? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna walk away. The final decision is going to walk away. Pearson Brown leaves with twenty six thousand dollars. What's the right answer? Rachel. I would have said one of the girls. That's fine with me. I love you, man. We'll be right back with more Millionaire. Here's your question of the day. A type of lady's garment shares its name with what gesture? High five, shrug, nod, wink. Stay tuned for the answer. The answer to that question was shrug. Welcome back. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. I'm going to bring one of our audience members down here and give him a shot at a thousand bucks. Katie Mordhorst from Boulder, Colorado. Please join me. Yeah. Hi, Katie. Hi. How you doing? Good, how are you? Come on over here. Okay. Wow, did you ever think you'd be on TV? No. Look at <laughs> This is great. Well, let me tell you how this works. Okay. I'm going to ask you a question. You get it right. I give you $1,000. That sounds good? Sounds good. Oh, that sounds good. Are you ready then? Yes, please. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> then let's play Millionaire! Okay. Here's your question. When you add the enzyme rennet to skim milk, its proteins become the curds and whey of Little Miss Muffet fame, better known today as what? Half and half, cottage cheese, tofu, sour cream. You know, uh, when I read that story when I was a little girl, I had no idea what she was eating. Uh, I thought it was like oatmeal but that's not one of the choices. And I think, I mean, the only thing that like clumps up, right? Curds, to me is cottage cheese. And the rest, uh, you don't really eat, you don't eat half to half. You don't eat sour cream by itself, but tofu is not made out of milk. So I'm gonna say B, cottage cheese. Is that your final answer? Oh, yeah, I have to say that. Final answer. And you are right!